All right, what's happening at Indian Wells? Well, Luka Nardi is happening. He takes out Novak Djokovic in the round of 32, shocking the world number one and tennis fans. And it was not without controversy, which we will get into uh, during the match. Also, we didn't do a preview, so sorry for that, but Nadal withdrew from the tournament. What does that mean? Felix Auger, he seemed not playing up to the way that he's been able to play in the past, and I think everyone believes he can. Loses to Alcaraz. We're going to take a look at the draw. We're going to get fully stuck into Indian Wells here on The Slice, and that's why you're here. So I appreciate it. Let's get into it. Okay, what's going on? Thanks for being here, folks. If you have not yet, smash the subscri subscribe button because scientific studies have come out showing that if you subscribe to The Slice, you become a better tennis player. And we all want to do that. We all want to be able to play like Luca Nardi, who is a 20-year-old Italian, 21-year-old. Um, and he just got the win of his career. He... Sorry, he is 20. Um, and he beats Djokovic in three sets at Indian Wells. And, you know, he's a lanky, some would say like me, strong, also like me, uh, counter-punching player with range. And this was really the first time I'd seen him play. Um, but I've obviously seen his name. He's been a challenger player. He's been, he's ranked just outside the top 100. He's, you know, this year, if we just look through his start to the year, you're, he's just going to blend in with a ton of the other challenger guys. He lost in the first round of Canberra challenger in Australia. Then he lost in the second round of qualifying at the Australian open. Then he lost in the first round of qualifying for the ATP 250 in Montpellier. Then he lost in the final of Chennai challenger to Samit Nagal, not Nadal, Nagal. Then he lost in the second round of Bengaluru challenger. So he has really hasn't done much this year, even on the ATP challenger tour. Like he's made a final. And then he comes and qual. Oh, sorry, he's a lucky loser for here at Indian Wells. Um, and then he beats Xi Zhen Zhang uh, in the in the round of 64. And then he comes out and beats Novak Djokovic. So I mean, that is pretty crazy. You have to uh, think that this is obviously the biggest win of his career. He said that. Um, but the more shocking thing is probably for Djokovic. I mean. He's sitting there and I watched his press conference and he's sitting there. He's um, saying, he's like, you know, not a lot's gone right for me this year. He's only played two tournaments. He lost in Australia, obviously in the semifinals. Um, and he lost here in a definitely what would be considered a bad loss for him to Luca Nardi. So not a great start to the year, but he's only played two tournaments. He's, this is gonna, this is probably the dumbest thing I've ever said. He's the oldest he's ever been. We all are, um, unless you're dead. Um, and yeah, this was just not a great loss for him. Obviously, his serve, um, you know, it was a close match. Like to be fair, it's three sets, but you know, he was not playing his best. The stats don't show too much, but he talked about his level. Um, he the thing was his his win percentage on second serve way down forty two percent. So, and then he had he faced eleven break points where Luca only faced four break points. So, Nardi was able to counter punch well and make. Djokovic uncomfortable, which usually it's Djokovic doing that to his opponents. Um, one thing I noticed about uh, Nardi is it's funny. He has kind of a takeaway on his forehand like a Burditch. He doesn't have his hand on the racket for very long. He, they kind of are separated. And he can crack it really when he's on the counter punch, like I said. But also when he gets pulled out wide on wings, he is not afraid to go for a crack up the line. And he did that many times from what I saw um, hurting Djokovic and you know, that makes you a dangerous player for sure. Being 6'1", lanky, able to move really well and punch, counter punch, uh, super interesting player, especially on a slower court like Indian Wells. So there was many times in this match where you saw Djokovic drop shot or bring Nardi forward and then Nardi gets there and passes Djokovic or lobs him. Um, so yeah, great player, 20 years old. Um, and he's got, you know, this is this puts him on the map big time for people. When you beat Djokovic, your name gets etched on like a list. Like Fabian Marojan, I don't think he, I don't know if he beat Djokovic, but I'm just, he's still in the tournament, but he, he had a big win at some point, And now he's just the guy that we all look out for. Um, the controversy. Okay. So this is interesting. So 
Djokovic serves a second serve kick serve um, up the tee on the ad side, I believe, and it like lands on the line. And Nardi returns it like this, like he super casual, almost acting like he thought the ball was going to be out. Plays it, the ball is not called out because it wasn't out. And then it's like a low bad return. Djokovic then drop shots Nardi. Nardi gets to it, passes him, and you can see while the ball's still in the air, as after Nardi gets to it, Djokovic has already given up on the point, being like, hey, what's going on? Now, if you've played tennis a lot, this is something that has probably happened to you. If you're just playing out on the weekend like I am, scrubbing it up, your buddy hits a serve. Usually it's actually when you hit a serve that you think is out and the guy doesn't call it out and he hits like a good return or something and doesn't call it out and you go, that was out. But I've had it the other way too where I think, um, you know, I'll, or they're serving at you, you don't call it out because you see it and you play it and then they almost like stop and then it just it, it like stop, but then they play it and then you like get your, your momentum gets put off and then you lose the point. And I've been there like arguing with people before, like you stopped in the middle of a point, like you can't stop, but actually you can stop. You can do anything that's not hindrance. Like you're allowed to like relax your body and not be looking like you're in the point, which is what Nardi did. Um, so Djokovic, understandably is frustrated because it is annoying when people do that, but it's not a hindrance like he was asking for. The umpire, I thought, did really well at um, not giving in and trying to be like, that's not hindrance. Um, and I think a lot of Djokovic fans I saw online were saying, yeah, I love Djokovic, but he was wrong in this moment. It happens to everyone. You get frustrated when something like that is happening, especially when it's not going your way. Um, I think that was on break point um, for Nardi uh, as well to break back in the early second set. Djokovic ended up winning that set. So really in the, in the scheme of the match didn't matter. Djokovic wasn't good enough on the day. Nardi played the match of his life so far. Um, but that was an interesting turn of a little casual return there. Pass, drop shot, and Djokovic not stoked on that, understandably. So yeah. So what else is going on there? Rafa Nadal withdraws from the tournament. He was in India Wells. He was playing um, or he was practicing at least. And he was golfing. We saw that. I saw videos of him with his very uh, neurotic golf swing setup, but he did not end up playing. And, you know, it's concerning if you're a Rafa Nadal fan or just a tennis fan. I mean, you got to get the, the machine rolling week in and week out if you're a tennis player. And you just can't do that. If you keep starting and stopping, it feels like every time you start again, then you're going to have something break. So really not great scenes for Nadal. But if he can just, keep, it's like, is he just preparing for the French Open basically? To get back on the clay where his body feels better and he can play more consistently, is he just really, really not taking any risks to get having a worse injury um, going into the clay season? That would be my guess. But yeah, you'd love to see Nadal playing, um, and he's not. So let's take a look at the draw as it stands. We've got yeah, Luka Nardi beating Novak Djokovic in three sets. Pretty big stuff. Tommy Paul has come through. Mickelson, that's a big win. Hugo Humbert, that's another good win. So Tommy Paul playing good tennis here. He'll play Luka Nardi Dow instead of Djokovic. That'll give him and his coach, friend of the show, Brad Stein, a little bit of relief, I think. Casper Ruud getting a couple good wins here um, into the round of, or the, not the quarterfinals, but the, yeah, round of 32. Wait, that was around a 64 that Djokovic lost in. I can't keep it straight. Anyways, um, Rudy will be playing Monfils. Medvedev takes out Korda and Kabaras Bayana. He's playing Dimitrov. That's an amazing match. Uh, and then Taylor Fritz playing Holger Runa, who, who took out Musetti. So that's another amazing match. So top half of the draw here. Djokovic out, makes it wide open. One of these guys, you know, Medvedev, Runa, they'll be trying to make the finals. Tommy Paul, you never know. Um, and look at that. I mean, the winner gets $1.1 million. It is a big-time tournament for sure. Bottom half, Andre Rublev loses to Yuri Lehechka. Sits a pass. Gets two wins under his belt. Obviously, no longer in the top 10. People are talking about it. The demise of the one-handed backhand. Um, sits a pass, though, I still think has got some surprises up his sleeve for sure. He's like 25. He'll play Yuri Lehechka in the round of 32. Or no, it's the round of 16. Sorry, that is, yeah, they, that was the round of 32. My math at 7.50 in the morning 
eight o'clock is not great. Ben Shelton takes out Sorendolo and Mensich. Jakub, Jakub Mensich, the um, young protege. Shelton will be playing center in the round of 16, which is pretty awesome. Center takes out Struff and Kakanakis. I mean, he's the is he the best player in the world right now? You got to think so. I think so. Yannick Sinner is the best player in the world right now, in my opinion. He'll be playing Ben Shelton. I'm taking Sinner in that one for sure. Zverev comes through. He's playing great. Demon Hours has been playing great, obviously. Um, Marojan, Fabian Marojan gets to the round of 16 to play Alcaraz, which is a good result for him. So he'll be keeping moving up the rankings. Um, we got Felix Auger Aliassim, 31, our Canadian guy. Gets a win over Lestien. That's a good win. 6 4, 6 1. We need wins. We need, really, we need wins at this point. And then he loses 6 2, 6 3 to, to Carlos Alcaraz, who, watching that match, I tweeted out, and it, and it pains me to tweet it. I'm really not trying to rag on the guy, but what it, I, I tweeted out that, that Felix Auger team is not really anywhere near. What I said is Felix Auger team does not look near the level he needs to compete with Alcaraz and the like consistently which is torturous to watch and must be even worse to be experiencing, especially when for the majority of 2022, FAA did have the level to compete with anyone. And now people forget and people love to pile on. He's obviously going through like a tough time in his career right now, where his confidence is low, seemingly. He's come off of these injuries that have made his confidence low, but he doesn't seem to really be injured right now. Um. And he's going through it. He's going through it big time. But people forget he was one of the most hyped players to come out of like as a 15, 14, 15, 16 year old in the last 10, 15 years based on his physicality, based on his physique and his game and his athleticism and the way he's shot up the rankings to be a household name really quick. Um, people forget. So I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm worried. It's not great to watch Felix, our guy, struggle like this. He lost to Carlos Alcaraz, though. So, He's got to have some tournaments where he makes a deep run, puts three, four, five wins back to back to back. That gets the confidence rolling again, and 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 it's a big deal to have confidence. You know, you you see, even Alcaraz hasn't been made a final of uh, ATP Tour event since Cincinnati last year. So confidence is huge for any of these guys. Djokovic doesn't have it right now. Sinner does. So that's what's going on. Anyways, that's a stuck into of it with the Indian Wells draw. Who's favorites right now? I think Carlos, obviously, on this surface, the high bouncing, slower surface is looking great and looking dangerous. I think he'll get through Marojan, and then he's going to have a tough one against Vera for Demon Hour. That's going to be a tough uh, quarterfinal. Sinner, Sitsipas, and then on the top, Runa, Medvedev, Rude, Tommy Paul. Lots of cats that can still win this, obviously. And, you know, if I had to pick a favorite, it would be Alcaraz. And center to meet in the in the in the semifinal, which is crazy. Um, and I think we'll see. I don't know. I guess my favorite would be center right now, based on the way he's played this year. Um, Yannick Center, absolutely. I'm just looking up just to check. Yannick Center wins Rotterdam. He wins the Australian Open. He literally hasn't lost a match yet in 2023. So I would say he's my favorite. He's cooking guys. Six three six zero bagel on Kalkanakis. So Yannick Sinner, looking hard to stop. Is he my favorite? I will put him there. Favorite to win going forward, but we're going to see if Alcaraz can find his top level again, and maybe they'll meet in the semifinal. And wouldn't that be tremendous? Thanks for being here. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for liking. We're on the way to 20,000 subscribers on the channel. Appreciate you, and we will see you next time here on 